So now let's examine in a nutshell act one and what happens in each scene within this act of Hamlet. Now, in Act 1 in Scene 1, essentially we learn that for two nights there's been a ghost in Elsinore Castle. And of course, do you remember that this play is set in Denmark? Now, there's this ghost that's been basically roaming and haunting Elsinore Castle. And the guards who are protecting the castle, and Horatio more specifically, who is Hamlet's best friend, so this is Prince Hamlet's best friend, realise that this ghost has a very similar likeness to his dead father. Now, they realise that this ghost, it keeps on haunting and they're not entirely sure what to do. However, Horatio decides that he's going to choose a good time to tell his friend Hamlet, Prince Hamlet, about this ghost that looks really similar to his father. Now, in Act 1, Scene 2, we learn separately, and so when the scene changes, that Gertrude, who's Prince Hamlet's mother and a widow, because we learn that Prince Hamlet's dad has died, King Hamlet, Gertrude and King Hamlet's brother Claudius marries and of course this leads to Claudius becoming the new king of Denmark and of course he's the leader of Elsinore Castle. So they marry and fairly quickly, fairly soon after the death of King Hamlet. Now Claudius, as I've mentioned, replaces the dead King Hamlet and they ask Prince Hamlet, who we know goes to university, to Wittgenstein University, they ask him to stop being so melancholic, so sad about his father's death but also they tell him that it's not really a good time for him to go back to university. They ask him to stay Stay at the castle and to not go back to university, which he agrees. However, we also learn, of course, as I've mentioned, that uh, Gertrude has remarried really quickly. Hamlet is really disgusted with her behaviour. He's really outraged at his mother's decision to marry. So, of course, this is interesting because he chooses not to be outraged at both of them to be married. Actually, his outrage is more directed towards his mother. He's disgusted that Queen Gertrude has married his father's brother, Claudius, rather than directing his anger also to his uncle Claudius for marrying his mother. Now, in Act 1, Scene 3, essentially we learn that Hamlet, as I mentioned, decides to stay in Elsinore, not go on to Wittgenstein University, not to go back. However, we're also introduced to Laertes and Polonius. And of course, we know that Polonius is a courtier. He's one of the close advisors of King Claudius. Now, Laertes and Polonius essentially advise Ophelia, who's the daughter of Laer uh, of Polonius, not to have a really close relationship with Hamlet. So we learn that Ophelia is kind of a love interest of Hamlet. However, she's not of the same class. So of course, remember that Prince Hamlet, he is royalty. Ophelia, Polonius, they are part of the courtiers. They are definitely part of the noble aristocracy, but they're not on the same level socially as Hamlet, as Prince Hamlet, who uh, Laertes and Polonius believe is probably going to be married off to another princess and so they don't want Ophelia to uh, remove her innocence, maybe even lose her virginity to Hamlet because they believe that Hamlet is just going to use her and then end up marrying a princess anyway. So they basically tell her, you're not allowed to talk to Hamlet anymore, you need to cut off links with him. Separately, Laertes decides to leave for university in France whilst of course Hamlet stays in Elsinore. And finally, Act 1 ends with scene 4 whereby Horatio does tell Hamlet that his ghost, a ghost that looks really similar to his father, is roaming around. There, then Hamlet decides to meet with the ghost and of course he sees him, he looks exactly like his dead father. Now the ghost makes a really powerful revelation to him. The ghost tells him that he was killed by his own brother Claudius, who of course was really quick to become king soon after. And he specifically tells Hamlet, you have got to avenge my death, you have got to seek revenge and kill Claudius because he's killed me. Now, Hamlet is, of course, really shocked by this realisation, but also it starts making sense to him a little bit because how was Claudius so quick to marry his mother and so quick to try and ask him to forget about, you know, the past events, his dad for passing on. So on the one hand, he kind of seems to trust and be swayed by what the ghost says. However, on the other hand, he does have a bit of a mistrust of the ghost and therefore he decides to feign madness, in other words, to act mad as a way to entrap Claudia, Claudius and to maybe misguide him in order to maybe trick him into revealing that definitely he killed King Hamlet or for him to know that he didn't kill King Hamlet. Do bear in mind that Hamlet's mistrust of the ghost is very typical of the Elizabethan era. Contextually speaking, a lot of Elizabethans thought that the ghosts, supernatural witches, were always mischievous creatures that caused chaos. Therefore, Hamlet is acting according to what typical Elizabethans would expect, which is not to completely trust everything that the ghost says at face value. However, what the ghost does say, and also the likeness of the ghost looking like his dead father, is too compelling and it's too important for Hamlet 
Hamlet to not ignore. So he decides that he's going to feign madness at different points in order to see whether Claudius is going to fall for his tricks and ultimately reveal that he's the one that killed his father. So that's it when it comes to the key events to know for Act 1.